I'll show you how a hacker can get into a Linux computer by exploiting SSH. SSH is a secure way to connect to a Linux computer, but uh, if it has a weak password, it can be a hacker's paradise. SSH lets you remotely control an entire computer, albeit through the command line. So by typing all kinds of commands, like enter desktop directory, make some folder, you see it, make some folder, you can delete files, you can view files, and anything. You can remotely control it using the terminal, using simple Linux commands. Now in this case, we are simply looking at the hacker's computer, but we're going to attack the victim's computer. So first we need to know the victim, which in this case is the Acme Inc. Uh, computer. Then we'll check which apps are running. Does it even have an SSH application running? We type nmap with the target address. And it's scanning the computer and tells you that it's running an SSH service on port 22. So now we might simply try to log in. And if we do that, You'll see it asks for a password. Now, we don't know the password. We could try to guess it. Um, but this manual guessing, it would take forever. So that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to try an automated attack. So we're going to try to automatically try a list of 1 million or 140 million passwords and see if the password is perhaps in there. So in Kali Linux, it has a default list. So if you open the file explorer and you go to the folder user share word lists, you'll find a large password list rockutxtgz, so that's what the attacker is gonna copy, into the home folder, you see had already copied it, but let's copy it, and then extract it, right click, extract here, so this is simply a text file with millions of passwords, commonly used passwords, um, we can actually take a look at it, I can open it like this, and you'll see commonly used passwords uh, that people used. So there's 1.4 million of it, or 40 million, uh, a lot of passwords. So we simply will try to do them automatically using a tool called Hydra. So it's called a brute force attack one by one. It will try every password in that list. So um, it will first try one, two, three, four, five, six, then one, two, three, four, five, and so on. It will simply go through this list and the program will try every password one by one automatically. And this list is quite long. You see um, a lot of passwords are in this list. Of course, it, the success factor depends on your password list and whether the password used is actually in this list. But with such a large list, there's a high chance that the password is in there. So next I might try to run Hydra with the target username the so minus l for specific username capital p to specify the password list the list we just saw and your target computer so this is the ip address or the network address and this makes sure that it's connect connecting through the ssh app and not any of the other apps if i press enter it will try one by one those passwords and you'll see it found here the password for that username so we have this username the password and the address so now we can log in as the user because we have the passwords so we could log in using this password now we are logged in and we can now remotely control the computer see if i check the computer we are now in this ubuntu computer uh, from kali so we hex this computer and we can now remotely control it we can do all kind of linux commands like looking in files and folders checking current directory or even try for example reading the password file or other things as well so we have now access into this computer because with hydra we were able to crack the ssh password ssh is one of the most powerful tools for managing linux computers or linux servers but it's also a big security risk when it's left exposed so today we'll focus on simple but effective steps to defend your SSH server, changing user passwords and disabling SSH when it's no longer needed. These quick actions can make a huge difference. So let's jump in. The easiest way to harden your SSH server is to ensure that all users who are on your system have strong and unique passwords. Because you saw in the previous video how easily an attacker could get in to a Linux computer and running SSH if it had a weak password for one of the users. So 
to change the password, first we have to log into the computer. You see, I am logged in right now. And we can simply change a password for a user by typing sudo passwd, it changes the password, and then the username. So this command, and then change the username to the username you want to change. For example, in this case, we have user Ubuntu. So we might want to change some new password. So they've changed the password. Now make sure to pick then a secure password for all of the users. To see all of the users, you can simply check output the etc password file. Now this is quite a large file. So if I press enter, you'll see a lot of users here, um, but also a bit, a lot of fixtures users. So you'll see a lot of no login. Those are not actual users. So you only want uh, users that have been bash or uh, any other type of shell. Uh, if they have no login, they can't actually log in. So we need to filter that. So here are our actual users. So we have two users. So for this system, you would want to make sure you have a secure password for Ubuntu and also for the user root and make sure that they are not the same because if they are the same, once they get the Ubuntu password, they can then become the administrator root by using the same password. So make sure that those two passwords are not the same. Um, so that's the basic things. You can simply set the passwords with this command where you change Ubuntu to your username. and it changes the password completely. So done. The users now have strong passwords. Uh, as long as they're not in a password list, this attack no longer works. Now, an alternative to this is simply disabling SSH. So disabling this remote control of Linux computers. If you don't need to have 24 seven access to your Linux computer over the internet, you might simply turn off SSH to reduce the attack surface. So let's see how to do that. First, we're going to check the status of the SSH surface. see it's running and then uh, if you want to disable it you can simply type um, sudo systemctl stop ssh that would disable the ssh service um, and you want to make sure to also disable it so now ssh um, is disabled and then the next thing you might want to do is to make sure it is not uh, automatically restarted when you start the uh, when you restart your computer. So now we can check the status of the SSH server, and you'll see um, it's disabled, uh, but it seems to be still running. We can double check that, and you see it's still running. Um, so want to make sure that you do stop the SSH server. Um, alternatively, you can also simply uninstall the OpenSSH server. So you can say remove the OpenSSH server. Yes. And then restart the computer. And because it's no longer installed, the SSH server, it can no longer start it. So SSH would be completely disabled. Now, another way to secure your SSH uh, service is using certificate based. Uh, authentication. So instead of password based, you can eliminate passwords completely and make it based on certificates. But we'll save that for another time. For now, changing passwords and disabling SSH uh, when not in use are the quick wins. So if you have to use SSH, make sure to um, to change the passwords to be, to be secure ones. And uh, if you want to use it, uh, or if you don't want to use SSH at all in the first place, then simply disable it when you don't use it. And that's it. Simply with these techniques, uh, you can make your Linux server much more secure. So remember, small actions like these add up to big improvements in security.